It can be difficult to stay motivated and to reap all the benefits of bike commuting when it gets rainy, dark, and cold. So here are my top five accessories that will ease your cold and rainy bike commute so you can ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous. Because life is short, but don't make it shorter, so you should do just that. What's up, I'm Zach Gallardo. Subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And of course, you can check out my recommendations linked in the description at any point during this video. For agile bikes made out of lightweight, rust-resistant steel built with buttery smooth and maintenance-free sealed bearing components, check out our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description. My number 5 accessory for commuting in the cold, rain, and dark is to wear a cycling cap underneath your helmet. Cycling caps are really great for keeping the sweat and the rain out of your eyes or off of your glasses if you have them. In addition, they also keep your head warm in the cold. And at least for me, it keeps my hair more in order compared to if I just wear a helmet. And depending on your specific weather conditions, you might want to choose either a cotton cycling cap or a merino wool cycling cap. I have a cotton cycling cap here. These tend to be better for mild to hot, dry climates. It's pretty lightweight, making it breathable, but because it is a cotton twill, it does absorb sweat and rain. This specific one is a Pace cotton twill cycling cap that I got from Amazon for like $15 to $20. It has no visible logos, it's black, and it fits well. Highly recommended. If you live somewhere colder, you might want to get a merino wool cycling cap. I would use this for anything under 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Merino wool is more absorbent than cotton, meaning it'll absorb rain and sweat better. It's also much warmer than cotton, and wool does stay warm even when it's wet. And merino wool has a nice balance of warmth and breathability where it'll keep you warm, but it won't get too stuffy. As a rough guideline, if it's anything below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, or if it's cold and raining, I would go with a merino wool cap. But if it's mild, say anything above 40 degrees and dry, I would go with a cotton cycling cap. This is even good during hot weather. Overall, cycling caps just make riding a lot more comfortable comfortable and they keep my hair in order, keep the sweat out of my eyes, and I almost never ride without one now. And number four, I recommend that you get a good set of gloves that will be appropriate for your riding conditions. When you're gripping your handlebars, your hands are taking a lot of that brunt of the cold air, which can make it feel a lot colder than if you were stationary. For your conditions, keep in mind that you're going to want to balance breathability, waterproofness, and warmth. When you are riding, your body is warming up and you're going to get blood flowing, which will eventually warm up your hands. I personally don't wear gloves unless it's below around 45 degrees Fahrenheit because even at around 50 degrees Fahrenheit I find my hands warming up really quickly and I just end up taking off my gloves because they start to get sweaty. Regardless, get yourself a good pair of gloves for your riding conditions so you're not trying to ride no-handed with your hands under your arms. Number three accessory are fenders. Yes, they don't always look the coolest. And yes, they break the clean, minimalist lines of the fixed gear that you oh so love. But if you want to actually ride your bike instead of just sitting around at a coffee shop with it, you're going to want to get a set of fenders. Fenders prevent you from getting that nasty, muddy, wet stripe up your back, and they prevent your shins from getting wet under heavy rain. Most of the water that gets you and your bike wet isn't from the rain that's falling down on you, but rather it's from the water that your wheels are constantly kicking up. Fenders come on a spectrum from convenience to coverage. On one end of the spectrum are super convenient strap-on fenders like these ass savers. Strap-on fenders are the best choice for most fixed gears because a lot of fixed gears don't have the necessary clearances or mounts for full fenders. These also have a very small footprint, which makes them really convenient to just throw in your bag and take it out when you need it. And they're practically universal and will fit just about any tire and frame combination. These are the smallest and the most convenient, but you're not going to get much coverage from it. And I would only recommend this if you're not riding with anybody because this is going to protect your ass it's not going to protect the person behind you. They do have this slightly less convenient, but still super convenient fender bender, which will give a lot more coverage and protect the person behind you. I used this model throughout my five month stay in rainy Taiwan, and I was pretty happy with it. As Savers also has a front fender called the Speed Mullet, which will protect your frame, drivetrain, and your shins at least a little bit. But of course, you're not going to get much coverage 
when you're cornering. Moving away from convenience and more towards coverage, we have clip-on fenders. Clip-on fenders are a nice middle ground where they require only a few minutes as opposed to a few seconds of installation and uninstallation. They require a little bit more frame and tire clearance, meaning that they might not all be compatible with track geometry, but they do give a lot more coverage compared to these strap-on fenders. And of course, there's the ultimate coverage and the biggest pain in the neck, which are full fenders. Installing full fenders has hands down been the most frustrating job that I've done for a bike. It requires measuring and cutting and power tools, and it's a huge pain to fiddle around to try to get the perfect fender line. And then they don't always come with the necessary hardware for your particular fender and frame set and tire combination. But assuming you go through all that trouble, full dedicated fenders will by far give you the most coverage and keep you and your bike clean and dry. And our number two accessory for cycling in the cold, dark, and rain is a waterproof bag. I personally didn't know how nice waterproof bags were until I tried them. Even here in California where it doesn't rain a whole lot, I can't see myself ever going back to a bag that isn't waterproof. It just gives you a whole lot of peace of mind. When I was a broke college student, I used to either just put a plastic bag over my bag or put my stuff inside those giant Ziploc bags. And you go from having to prepare when it rains to just always being prepared with a waterproof bag. They are a bit more expensive than ones that are not waterproof, but by far because of how much these are exposed and outside, it's just worth it to spend the extra money up front and get it waterproof. The bag that I've been using for the past eight months or so is the Black Chrome Citizen Messenger. This thing has a really tough build quality and of course it is waterproof. This bag was a limited run though, so it's going to be hard hard to find, but luckily most of Chrome's other bags, including their regular Citizen Messenger, are waterproof as well. And our number one accessory for cycling in the cold, dark, and rain are, of course, headlights and tail lights. When choosing lights, you're going to need to decide between USB rechargeable lights or battery powered lights. For the tail light, it's fine to get a battery powered light. My favorite tail light, the Planet Bike Super Flash Turbo, runs on batteries. Because of the tail light, it's flashing a lot of the times, so it doesn't consume a whole lot of battery. So with the Super Flash Turbo, I only have to replace the batteries about once every six months. I have tried a bunch of different tail lights, USB rechargeable and battery, and that has by far been my my favorite tail light. Right now I'm using this USB rechargeable tail light, but the convenience that you get with using a tail light that just uses replaceable batteries far outweighs having to recharge this after every single ride. But the headlight is a different story. I would recommend that you actually get a USB rechargeable light because it's way better to get a light that is 2C rather than a light to be seen. Pretty much any light that you get that is meant for seeing and illuminating the road in front of you is going to be USB rechargeable because these things do consume a good amount of power. Most replaceable battery powered headlights on the other hand will be those lower end rinky blinky lights. Lights that are meant to see are better in just about every single arena. They're the most versatile, which is particularly important because it gets darker earlier during these months. In the middle of winter in Northern California, the sun will rise at about nine o'clock in the morning and set at about four o'clock in the afternoon, which means that if you're commuting, you're going to be using lights at both ends of your commute. And a light that is to see will let you see where you're going no matter what your other light conditions around you are. In my experience, these are also just safer. Drivers see me way sooner than if I was just using a blinky light. I can also see road hazards and just see the road in general. Lights that are 2C will just keep you safer and allow you to ride under more conditions. The one that I use is the Knight Rider Lumina 1100 Boost. It is way overkill, it is large and annoying, but I've had a good experience with it and Knight Rider does make ones that are smaller, have less lumens, but still bright enough to see ahead of you, and will keep you safe in the dead of night at 5 p.m. Question of the day, what other videos do you all want to see for cold, wet, and night riding for these coming months of November and December? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of cold and wet cycling, our channel sponsor Wabi Cycles makes bikes that are great for just that. Although Wabi's frames are made out of steel, you can ride them all throughout winter because they're ED coated inside and out, making them very resistant against rust, unlike most other steel frame sets. Wabi's are also specced with buttery smooth 
with sealed bearing headsets, bottom brackets, and hubs, which lets them spin smoothly without any maintenance all throughout fall and winter. Which is great news because Wobbies are either made out of high-end Reynolds 725 or Columbus Spirit tubing, giving them a lively ride quality that only top shelf steel can bring. So forget building up a winter beater bike and enjoy fair weather ride quality with winter durability and check out Wobby Cycles at the link at the top of the description. And don't watch this upcoming video if you haven't ridden your bike yet. Instead, shut down your device right now and ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.